Hey YouTube, it's Mark here. Hope you're well and good this afternoon. Just going to record a video off the back of an email that I received from a brother in the Lord that uh, I actually asked him uh, after reading his email, which I agreed to entirely, whether he would object to me uh, reading some of what he's written and uh, sort of sharing some of his thoughts as well. And uh, it was it was kind of a general email. Um, uh, this the emails that this brother sends um, they're always things that I just wholeheartedly agree with and uh, he's very observational uh, much like myself I think and just kind of watches what happens and, and what's going on especially here on YouTube of course and um, just generally as well uh, you know a light touch on the news and, and things like that and uh, I was reading through his email and um, he touched on something that I thought was really important and it's something that I you know that I've tried hard to do in this ministry um not perfect at it but i, I certainly try and it's something that, that that he's right when he talks about it that's lacking elsewhere and i just wanted to read the verses that he quoted to me which is ephesians chapter 6 verses 20 to 22 for which i am an ambassador in bonds that therein i may speak boldly as i ought to speak but that ye also may know my affairs and how i do Tychicus, a beloved brother and faithful minister in the Lord, shall make known to you all things, whom I have sent unto you for the same purpose, that ye might know our affairs, and that he might comfort your hearts. Amen. Great bit of scripture, right? And let me read you, I've got um, a phone here with the, with the email on, but let me read you what he wrote. I mean, it was a longer, more generalised email, but the point that he made um, about these verses were in kind of reflection on the things that he was kind of looking at. And uh, I just want to read it pretty much verbatim for you um, and, and kind of share some thoughts as I, as I read that. So just a, a paragraph or two. It just seemed like something was missing from a lot of these guys and women on YouTube and even the internet. So it's just commentary at this point here, right? Maybe I'm overthinking myself here, but while a lot of them give a lot of biblical knowledge as well as other resources, at the same time, either they were always pointing at themselves, i.e. throwing a pity party for themselves, like how they were mistreated and lied to at their former churches, etc., but do next to nothing in terms of helping other struggling Christians, and or they are just very secretive, CIA-ish, MI5-ish. But look at the context of these verses. Even Paul wanted to make known his affairs, and the people around him making known their affairs, what they do, etc. No, it doesn't mean all of the dirty details of their secret lives or anything, but what they do in their ministries, how they are coming along in their ups and downs of their Christian walks, etc. For some reason, it was just sticking out at me this week. And and he's right. He's absolutely right, brethren. Um, and, and it's something, as I said, that I've been touching on a few times. And the reason I wanted to read his email or part of his email, and I'll read a bit more as well in a minute, um, and talk about these verses. Because, you know, for example, here in this small ministry that I have, I'm very kind of open about what I do. If you've met me, you 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 know I look the same, I talk the same, uh, and so on. And I'm I'm very open about what I do. But again, as, as this brother has talked about, not about, you know, my my private life, so to speak, um, and, and quote all the dirty details. But I'm very open and transparent about the, the walk that I have, the struggles that I have. You know, you, you just don't really see it in, in, in that many channels, if at all. Or they take uh, chastisement as a sign that they're preaching the right doctrine, which is definitely not always the way it should be. And he's right. We should actually be be open in this way with one another. And I always find it very unusual when I either come across a YouTube ministry that isn't so open or I come across a, a Christian, a professing Christian that equally isn't open. You know, some of the videos I recorded recently talking about when my when my dad passed away in December, you know, it's very candid and very kind of to the point. I also talked about my my housing situation and these aren't, you know, so to speak, secret parts of my life. There are just these are things that are happening. And then a lot of the preaching and a lot of the, the, the things that I've been doing since December. I mean, I've always been preaching on, on the Christian walk, but it's become even more important to me recently because it's just been very chaotic and very unsettled for me. And uh, a lot of the preaching, if you kind of go back, you'll see that it's angled in a certain way because I've been dealing with a lot of difficult things. 
So, you know, th this brother is absolutely fundamentally right that, you know, we should be kind of open in that way. And you should be able to look at a ministry and understand who they are, and where they come from and what they're doing and so on and so forth, as opposed to just, quote, you know, sharing knowledge, you should get to know that person. A ministry would be like that in the flesh. YouTube shouldn't be any different. Um, you know, so so he's absolutely right about this, but he also touched on something else that I've been talking about quite a bit recently, that he says here, he says here but do next to nothing in terms of helping other struggling Christians. Amen. He's 100% right, brethren. You know, when you come across a Christian that you know is struggling, that is having difficulty, you know, whether it's money, food, housing, clothing, whatever it might be, you know, a job opportunity, you know, anything at all. If you have the ability to help them, as the scripture talks about, then help them. You know, if, a, if you see a brother or sister that's destitute and in need, if you have the ability, help them. If you don't, you know, that's fine, of course. You know, so... It, in this ministry here, I've tried to do that to the best of my ability. So there are Christians that maybe are watching this that have benefited from the giving that I've done. I've benefited from the giving that Christians have given me. More often than not, to be honest with you, brethren, I tend to just, you know, pass that on. I mean, I've, I've received some wonderful help from Christians before. And I have this, this fear, to be honest with you about using it correctly. So I always try and discern the will of the Lord for what I should do with that. And, you know, I have my own need, but there are Christians out there that have far, far greater need. And I, I always try and balance what I'm dealing with versus what other Christians are dealing with. So, you know, at times back in the past, I petitioned um, those of you watching this to help this Christian that's over in, in California, this Christian lady that's over there. And there's been others. There's a, a brother that I've talked about in the past who, you know, I've also petitioned for help for. And I've received that and I've passed it on. You know, it's uh, interesting, the video that I recorded, I think just before this, about the ministry over in the Philippines, um, I actually forwarded on some of what I've been given recently to that ministry. And... I knew it was the right thing to do. And actually, I, you know, I started corresponding with, with this ministry behind this translation. It's one particular pastor that's kind of, I guess, uh, leading it, for want of a better expression. A really lovely, humble guy. And, you know, he started telling me a bit about his life. You see, this transparency, Ephesians 6.21, this, this transparency, he immediately just told me what he's doing, what he's up to, everything. Not in a, in a kind of veiled way to sort of get some help from me. You didn't ask for anything. That's another, you know, another great sign. It, it, when someone's in need, especially a Christian, it's very, very difficult to ask for help. And, you know, as, as Christians, if, if we have the ability to help people, you should always try to be discerning whether that's the will of the Lord to do that. And if it is, then do it. You know, so some of the, the giving that I've received... Uh, a little while ago, I, I passed straight on to this this person because I believe the the work that he's doing, publishing this Ang Bagong Testamento, this New Testament in in Filipino, I believe it to be a good work. And from what I've been reading so far, it's very good. It's very impressive, you know. And and getting um the the scriptures in Tagalog over to the Philippines and a proper, you know, translation, none of this Ang Biblia NIV nonsense, you know, a real proper translation of the King James Bible in Tagalog. That's a, that's a good work, you know, and that's worthy of help. And if, again, you know, I've come across someone who needs help like that, then, then I'm going to help them, you know, in preference and, and in deference to myself. But this is the point, you know, we, we talk plainly, we talk openly about our lives, and we should be helping one another, and, you know, this is something that I've touched on num a number of times that, um, you know, you go onto YouTube and, and I do that most days in terms of just browsing and keeping an eye. And I'm just, I'm honestly staggered by what I see. I'm really, really staggered by what I see. You know, there's, there's one channel in particular who's just obsessed with one individual and it's just daily dozens of videos. And it just makes you wonder what on earth is going on. You know, and then you've got other ones that are just putting out just divisive and, and angry topics and all the rest of it. And it's just, it's horrendous. And you kind of wonder what's wrong with these people, you know. Don't they ever sit back and stop and go, hang on a second, you know, I should be, I should be helping my brethren. 
You know, instead of making a million videos about this individual, why am I not, you know, trying to sort out some help for this Christian that's struggling over there and, and so on and so forth? Or talking more generally about their walk and their life and their needs and their struggles. But instead, it's all about desiring to be teachers of the law. And it's really, really disturbing, to be honest with you. So just another part that I wanted to read as well here. Uh, it talks about, he says, believe me. So just moving on a little bit here. Because the, the email was about a number of things. But there are certain things that I wanted to read within it. So he says, believe me. I've seen this over and over and over again. Not only on YouTube or Google+, Plus, but also on message forums. And it's all... And, it's, and all it's done is drive a rift and sharp divisions and bitterness and thorns along with it, Hebrews 12, 14 to 15. And the worst thing about all of this is that it will only develop further bad habits and it will, emphasis, carry over when you try to communicate with others face to face. Anyhow, I know this is very long, but yes, I couldn't agree more. Fellowship with the other brethren and sisters is very crucial because it builds on all the aspects of the fruits of the Spirit. So it's kind of off the back of some of the things that I've been talking about recently about fellowship. And fellowship is critical. It's so important for us as Christians. And that's why, you know, I just... I'm always trying to make the effort to keep in touch with people and to visit people when I can. I mean, there's, there's a limit to what I can do. I mean, the brother that I saw uh, a few weeks back, uh, that was nearly a four hour drive to get there. There's another brother that, that I'm hoping to see fairly soon that I, I, I had to just reschedule that recently. But he's nearly two hours away. It's very difficult. There's a brother that I've made touch with who I think is only about half an hour, 40 minutes away. It's not so bad. I haven't actually met him yet, but that's something that I'm hoping that I can sort out. But it's very difficult to just have this great, lovely assembly in a house here, for example. I mean, I, I would like to do that, but, you know, where are you going to find King James Bible believers of sound doctrine and faith here in uh, Surrey, in Walton on Thames? Uh, it's very, very difficult. It's a lot easier in the Philippines, I can tell you that. It's a lot easier in the Philippines. And uh, Lord willing, if I can go out there again soon, and uh, I have no idea when that's going to be currently, but if I can, I am hoping to meet this this uh, pastor that's involved in this translation for this uh, Tagalog Bible. So I'm hoping that I can meet him as well. And And that's the point. That's what I really want to do. And, you know, so I talk about it like that. I, I talk openly and plainly. And um, if any of you correspond with me, um, you'll know that I just speak fairly freely about a lot of things, you know. And again, not in, not in sort of, you know, the nitty gritty as, as this brother's talking about. But, um, you know, I'm quite, I'm quite open with, you know, my struggles and, and how I'm feeling and all the rest of it. And it's a great comfort and encouragement to me, brethren, to exchange that those letters so to speak with other christians it's a great comfort to me and i just think it's so sad when it just descends into something other than than beautiful fellowship and helping one another when it's just you know endless study or you know divisions and arguments and striving over words and so on it, it really shouldn't be that way and this brother is just absolutely spot on 100 percent right with this so you know i wanted to read um those verses, Ephesians chapter 6, verses 20 to 22, and uh, read parts of his email. Um, and, and thank you to this brother for giving me permission to read your words. And, but, but he's absolutely 100% correct. And, um, you know, those, those of us that, that are trying to just get away from the behaviour and attitude that you see on YouTube you know, fully agree and understand with this guy, you know, because he's right, he's absolutely right. And what's going on on YouTube, is, as I've mentioned before, it's very corruptive, it's very insid insidious, you know, it's very, um, it's 11, ultimately. And as he said, you know, it will carry over to your face-to-face -face interactions. And believe me, I've, I've kind of been there in part, because I've talked about this before, that, that when I was very strong on the, the Bible version issue, you know, I would reprove quite strongly the people that I used to fellowship with. So, for example, the Baptist Church uh, down the road here. I've met um, uh, a couple of the guys there just periodically over the over the years since I've departed. And I remember one of the, the meetings, like I think the meeting before the last one, 
I was just very, very strong on the whole Bible version issue. And I realised, and this is something that I've been talking about before, that I really just didn't have enough grace in that conversation. And it was kind of like, as I said, when you watch a lot of these Bible version videos on YouTube, the, the person presenting the information, and I, I've made this mistake, hopefully it wasn't too bad, but you can be over strong in delivering it. And I, I've always tried to kind of be kind of, calmish but remaining zealous and strong at the same time but it's a very very fine balancing act and if you don't get it right as, as this brother said it will carry on to your face-to-face -face interactions so this is why I think over the last probably two to three years particularly that I've been improving you know the, the grace that I have for others and again I mentioned this before I don't drop anything that I'm persuaded of in the scriptures. I just don't. Um, but I handle that a lot better than I used to. So, you know, and again, I, I won't just shirk fellowship because of, of a few differences here and there. As I said, um, if you go and look at my, uh, the, the funeral video or the videos around the funeral, uh, two of the brothers, and they're saved men, there's no question about it, from the Baptist church that I used to go to, uh, I invited them to come to the funeral because my, my dad had a connection with them uh, for a while after I'd left. And I mean, I was quite, quite, you know, I didn't really want to get any more involved in it. I just separated and, and kind of moved away. But as time went on, and it was, wasn't easy, it wasn't easy at all, brethren, because the flesh wants to rise and get angry and say things, you know, in a strong way. But as, as time has gone on, I've tried to live my Christian life by letting my moderation be known unto all men. So when these two brothers came along, I, I didn't want to make them feel awkward or difficult. I thanked them very much for coming. And, you know, we embraced as brothers in the Lord and I was, I was grateful for their presence. You know, they talked to my, my sons for a while. I was happy that they were there, brethren. And this is the problem. You know, I've, I've known, um, I've had correspondence with Christians before that have said that they've just been cast aside um, by differences even between King James Bible believers. So, you know, we, we have to learn to exercise appropriate grace for one another. I mean, if for, for example, if at the funeral, and, and it obviously wouldn't have happened and didn't happen, if the whole King James Bible thing would have come up, I would have defended it. I would have been very strong on the topic, but at the same time with some grace. And again, this is something that you have to learn. So, you know, my time here on YouTube, I've been very careful to not get carried away by the dissimulation of others. And when you look at some of these channels on, on, on here, it's just, it's appalling. And I'm very thankful that I've steered away from that. I probably, you know, if you look maybe in the first year or two, you could probably, uh, you probably discern I was perhaps going a certain way. But I headed that off fairly quickly because I realised it was wrong. And why? Because the scriptures teach against it firmly. So, you know, I wanted to record a, a short video, shortish, coming up to 20 minutes. Just talking about that, it was a great email from this brother. I, I do like to hear from him. And uh, whenever he sends emails, they're usually quite long and quite detailed. And there's, there's quite a lot of information in there. But I always find myself reading it and just nodding my head and agreeing. And he was absolutely right about this. So I do pray that this video, again, you know, pray that these verses are a blessing for you. I pray, pray that the ministries and Christians that you're involved with, um, the assemblies that you go to, I pray that they're, they're like this, that they are open with their affairs. They make them known unto you and that by way you do the same because we need, we need one another as Christians. And if we're all kind of just closeted off and, and isolated and, and doing our own thing, it is not healthy for us, brethren. So again, you know, I talk about fellowship and uh, correspondence. You know, again, I just, um, correspondence has kind of died off. Uh, for me, I never exactly got, a lot of it anyway but I've noticed a lot of uh, the brothers and sisters and, and families that I used to speak to have just kind of vanished and it makes you wonder why sometimes you know because my life hasn't really changed and and you know it's a great benefit to share what's going on you know what, what I'm dealing with and all the rest of it and, and learning about what they're dealing with and you know, uh, phoning them, visiting them or whatever. But uh, it's just, it's strange how things have changed. I'd probably say in the last year, I think, would be a fair time frame. That it just feels like we're all kind of not talking to each other, you know. And everybody's just kind of grim-faced and, um, you know, 
just yeah just doing their own thing and, and not really thinking about it and and the scriptures say that we shouldn't forsake assembly not that it's a sin for us to do that but it's for our benefit that we should be doing that and um you know if you do come across a brother or sister that you know that that you get along well with that you begin talking to and so on and so forth maintain that work at it you know and um, yeah, I've made that mistake. You know, I'm not going to say that that I'm just perfect and sending out email after email or, or you know whatever it is. But I, you know, I've made those mistakes as well. But it doesn't mean that I'm happy about it. And you know, I'm talking about it now, for example. So I do encourage you to do that. So if you if you have contact with a brother or sister, perhaps you emailed them six months ago or a year ago or even longer. Just drop them a quick email, see how they're doing. Or maybe you've got their phone number, uh, their mobile or something. Drop them a, a text. Check in on them, see if they're okay. And uh, it's funny, I'm just thinking about that now, actually. I'll probably, probably do that with a few brothers and sisters after this video, because again, it's a failing of mine. It's not, not that I'm sitting here and, and everything's great. You know, it's a failing of mine, but this is, this is the point that I'm trying to make, that, that we all need to be here for one another. And uh, there's so few of us, and when I, when I say that, not born-again Christians, but King James Bible-believing Christians that are sound in doctrine, um, and in faith, but also in our behaviour, our attitude and, and, and what we know is important. And that's helping one another, preaching to the lost. So, you know, it's just a shame that, um, you know, that there are channels and, and teachers and men out there that uh, could be doing so much for the Lord. And uh, yet yeah, all they want to do is just record video after video, after, you know, against one another. And uh, it's just a... A chest puffing exercise from what I can tell very sad very tragic so anyway good email from this brother um, thank you brother you know who you are uh, I'm grateful for your email and your time spent writing that and sharing that and also your permission to just read your words and talk about that I'm, I'm grateful for that if you would like to leave a comment please do so um, feel free to email me biblebeliever.uk.gmail.com I'd love to hear from you thanks very much god bless and godspeed thank you